So let me go ahead. Here we go. Well, you know, the full group comes in at about 17. You know, we are truly African-centered people. You know how it is. So okay. it's said, you say start at eight, but you know, most people get there by about 18. So I'm good, but we can, we can go ahead and start having a conversation. And I first just want to say hello to everybody that's here. Hi. Uh, oh, Dr. Cato is here. Dr. Cato just went on a trip. So I hope yep. that, you know, that's wonderful. Okay. Belvedere, Dr. RV, Eddie Joe is in the house. Yay. Nia, Patricia from UK. Paula McNair is here, Rashida, and yeah. Sheila. I'm eating pistachios. Hope you don't mind. <laughs> Just munch them. Um, so yeah, let's see what, what do we have in the chat? We have a, some chat comments. Sorry. Oh, just good evening, everyone. Okay, great. Good evening. Good evening. So good to be here. Yeah. So good to. So you know, you know, you know. I must think that this group gives me lots of joy because I do this even on vacation. Okay. <laughs> I've told a whole bunch of other people, no, I'm not meeting with you. Not doing any of that. But this group, I'm going to do even on vacation. Um, so today, uh, our discussion was going to be about, it's not over till it's over. Uh, we all know it's not over. Um, and these, and then the other piece of that is, as you saw from the title on the title page on our, um, as Michelle was playing the music, meet the real COVID Dodgers. I don't know if you had a chance to see the Washington Post article recently. It came out about people who have not had COVID at this point. We are part of a very exclusive club right now. And even if you've only had it once, still relatively exclusive club because if lots of people have had it two, three, four, five times for real. But there are a lot of people in this group that have not had it at all. You know. Um, and that's a win. You know, out of the 11 people in this group, I'm pretty sure statistically, it, was, it should be that seven out of the 10 of us should have had COVID. And I don't think that that's the case with our group. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure, and there's 13 people here now. I'm pretty sure that we have more than um, more than half of the people in this group have not had COVID, dodge COVID. So that's a win. We're doing something right. Um, We're doing something that you know that um, is effective, and um, I also want to say that many of you have also done stuff. Let me see a show of hands. We've got fourteen people here now. Can I see a show of hands of people who have gone to have traveled while in the last two years, taking a trip anywhere? Put put your hands up. Cato is a yes. I'm driving with the one hand I have. Okay, so Cato's a yes. Anybody else? Just, just, and keep it, keep it up. Okay, and who's gone to a party? And keep your hand up. Don't take them. Cato's down yet. a yes. Okay, so, Cato, you've not only gone to a party, you've given parties. <laughs> You've traveled and given parties. I really okay. have. So we got three. Now, Eddie Joe, I don't see your hand up. I know you been to a party. Okay, how do I raise my hand? Because I don't see it. 
Oh. And that's so funny. That is, I'm sorry, you all, that is so funny. I know it is. I'm looking at, I know, I know, it's probably right in front of my face and I can't see it. Look for reactions. Mm -hmm. I know mine says reactions. Mm -hmm. I have reactions, but. Click on it. Oh, wait, I'm clicking the wrong thing, y'all. And I got glasses on. Reactions. Um, reactions. I see the, the clap, the thumbs. So if you go to chat. Okay, so that's it, Miss McNair. So you got a clap. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. I see. See, I told y'all mm -hmm. I had glasses on, just couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I went to a party. We have 15 people now. So the question up right now is put your hands up if you've traveled or you've gone to a party. Dr. RV, you ain't having it. <laughs> Dr. RV, um, you, you travel? I thought you did a road trip. Okay. Dr. RV went out of town or something. Okay. Dr. RV. She probably walked away. Went to a concert. I've been to a concert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you hear my me now? Hand, my hand is raised on that one too. You went to a concert. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Dr. Bessman, uh, I'm sorry, looking for my hand. Uh, we have been to Hawaii and we've been to parties. Okay. This, this is Dr. RV. Okay. There you go. So basically, out of this group, there's only now Patricia. I know you went to a party because you you went to a dinner party. Somebody gave you for your birthday. Oh yeah, Miss Patricia in, in uh, London. Mm hmm. Yep. Okay. The point. Okay. Miss Brown, so, you haven't been anywhere, Miss Effie Brown. Yes, you have. You didn't Yes, yeah, her hand is up. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've been to the beach, and uh, we were just in a town in, in uh, Birmingham and uh, Montgomery on a Black History thing last week. Well, you didn't call me. Who was that? Michelle, I'm in Montgomery. Oh, you are? I was in my Birmingham. Yeah, me mm -hmm. and my family went there to, you know, to Rosa Parks Museum and... Mm -hmm. You know, all the places there because my niece, my granddaughter is wanting to was wanting to go to those places and so my family we all went there mm -hmm. you hear me? You? Hmm. Okay. michelle oh, no. you digitalize you digitalize miss brown <laughs> <laughs> sorry no problem. Oh, yeah, I uh, I uh, felt really, I felt really depressed when I was there because I went to Salmon, went across the bridge. I mean, saw uh, on the news with the holes and the beating and the dogs and stuff on you know our people here in uh, in Alabama. It was just, oh. it was heart wrenching to me, oh, and uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, almost was in tears while I was there because you know the struggle that we had to have had part taken place of there, and uh, I would have never known I would have had my put my foot my feet down in Alabama anywhere anytime. But I'm glad I went. You know, I understand. The Lord has blessed us, and we just got to go forward. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm glad. Okay. Oh, me, Sheila. Mm, it's me. Okay. So there's, yep. So basically, out of everybody that's in this group, there's 15 people in this group. There's only two or three that we haven't heard from that said they haven't gone anywhere, done anything. So the reason why I sent us through this exercise is, and, and there are many of us who have gone, have done multiple things, like Dr. Cato has. Uh, 
traveled, given parties, gone to parties, gone to a concert. What was interesting about the article in the Washington Post was that they were commenting how people were, they said, they said two things that I think was erroneous. One was people weren't catching COVID because they were isolating themselves. Well, it's not true for our group. You know, we're out here living robust, joyful lives. We're not isolating, we're not holed up in our houses like hermits. Um, we've gone out, we're, you know, we learned how to do it safely, but we've gone out and done, you know, and lived our lives. And that's important, that's a win. And it's important to recognize that. And even though nobody's writing a Washington Post article about us, they should be, <laughs> okay? Because we are, you know, still being social people, social, you know, gathering together socially, doing things. And even if we, you know, slipped up, we've learned the lesson and we're doing it better the next time. And that's important. That's a, it's still it's still a win. It's a win. Um, the other thing that they mentioned in the article was they thought most of the people who had not caught COVID that they didn't really know why they haven't got COVID. I'm real clear. I, I don't think that that's true for the people in our group. I think our group probably knows exactly why they have not gotten COVID. And they probably, and for those who have gotten COVID, they probably even know, they can tell you, oh yeah, I can, I can tell you what, what happened, what biosafety practice or, or that, that, you know, um, guideline I didn't follow on that one time and I got COVID. He, my son can tell you that. He knows what the biosafety protocols are. He knows exactly what happened and where he messed up. And that's fine. That's a win too, when you know. Because in this article in the Washington Post, they were trying to say that people didn't know. People didn't, you know, they didn't know how they were staying safe and didn't know. So it's a win to me when people know, know what they need to do, know how, how to improve their own behavior. So that's a win. Um, I also want to let you know that there's another way that something is a win. When you are able to, when your performance is better than your teachers, performance, that's also a win. Um, and, you know, I'm not being out of pocket, not, not being out of school. Lane talked about it on his web page. This is the second time he's gotten COVID. And I don't think that there's anybody in our group that's gotten COVID twice. I don't think so. So, so far, the 18 of us, we're on this call. We're doing better than our teacher at this point. It means that we learned the lesson and started practicing and doing the application. Because it's one thing to have the knowledge. It's another thing to know how to apply it and have the application of what to do, when to do it, what to take, you know, where you, wherever you are and apply the knowledge. And it's sort of like, the difference between, for those of you who are Christian, you'll understand this, this, this reference, but I say there's one, it's one thing to read the word and it's another thing to live the word. And Dr. Blessman, I, I have had it twice. I had it early mm -hmm. on when they first announced it was COVID and then mm -hmm. um, actually had it a couple of months ago. And, could, mm -hmm. and the only thing I could chalk it up to was my husband letting his guard down because he tested positive, but he didn't have any, any you know, uh, symptoms or anything. I, I started with a sinus infection and that's when I went, I test, got tested just to, to check. And that's the only thing I could think of. Okay. Okay. Well, the thing is, you know, and that's, yeah. you know, you know. You know, I can't, you know, the one that you got before you started, to, before you started talking with us, you know. Yeah, that was early March. That was right. our, yeah. 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 That was definitely before we were doing any um, Zoom calls. Yeah, that's when so, they were telling everybody to stay home. That's when I was mm -hmm. sick and didn't, didn't realize mm -hmm. it. Um, 
And so the thing about when you live with somebody that may not be as careful or cautious, like right now I have a 14 year old who's not careful or cautious, who, who when he went to that concert was not careful or cautious. He's away now in Hawaii, probably not being careful or cautious. So I have to think about how do I protect, how do my husband and I protect ourselves when he comes back into our house? <laughs> it's going to be interesting. Dr. Blessing, um, talking about um, when you said our teacher, are you talking about Dr. Rowland? Mm -hmm. He has it I again. Mean, I, you know, go ahead. He has it again? Yeah, he had it again. Uh, uh. I um, think with Dr. Rowland, Dr. Blessman, it's just overconfidence that he thinks he knows everything. And he really doesn't always apply it and practice what he tells us. So the lesson in that then, what the lesson to us is, don't get overconfident. Exactly. Practice what you preach. <laughs> okay. Exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dr. Blair. Dr. Lesson, uh, my husband, Miss Brown, Miss Brown, friend this morning, Brown. To go get his car fixed, and um, he came back home about two hours ago. The guy called, yeah, uh huh, Miss Brown. I want you. Yes. To, I want you to move maybe out. Yes. From, Can you not, hear me? Not, not really. You're digitalized. Can you hear me? Not. I can hear you, but you're you keep going in and out. Can you move? Yes. Can you move in the house? Can you get closer to the window or something, or in a better? Yeah. Just uh. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I have my earphones on my, my daughter. But I was saying that uh, today my husband had to help a man uh, this morning to go get his camper fixed. And so uh, about two hours ago, the guy called and said that his granddaughter uh, that lives you know, near them happened to go and see his wife and she tested positive for COVID. So he just called and my husband know that. So mercy, I got to spray in and told him to get in that, get out those clothes and get in the shower. <laughs> and usually he, he um, you know, think that like some husbands, oh, I don't have to do all this, you know, but I, you know, I told Spencer, I said, you know, that's why I asked you to do those things because you just never know when you're out there in the public, you know, who have it, you just come home and just change your shirt and pants and just, you know, uh, start afresh. And so, so right now I have my granddaughter over here and it's probably all right, but you know, tomorrow I'm gonna take her home anyway. <laughs> but, you know, you just never know uh, what's going on. So I done sprayed around with my stuff. And so we just have to pray for each other. And I appreciate what, you know, what I've learned here on the, on the line here. Do you have any COVID tests? Yeah, I have a COVID test, so I'll, I'll have him take it tomorrow, or should I do it today? Oh, I didn't hear you. Dr. Bussman, you're on mute. Oh, what'd you say? Sorry, it takes three to four days after possible exposure for it to show up on a COVID test. Okay, yeah. Um, okay. The other thing that I would really suggest to people now, and the, the, rule, the rule of thumb in our house right now is you don't leave home without your ionizer. Well, he had his ionizer on. That's one thing. He didn't oh. have his mask, but he had his ionizer on. Great. Okay. Great. Because between okay. the ionizer and skin guard, you pretty much got good protection mm -hmm. if you're <laughs> around other people. Yeah, I don't know so, if he had a skin guard on, because I usually remind him of that, but I don't. He don't use it, so mm -hmm. I didn't think about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. We were at the restaurant, and I had my air chain on. Mm -hmm. When I leave out the house, I have it on my chair. And I remind, you know, we're on vacation, but I remind everybody, all my housemates mm -hmm. that are here with me, you know, we all have ionizers. We're, 
you know, where, because, you know, you never know what you're going to do, you know. Yeah, we were, we were, you know, we were eating outside, but we started to, decide to walk around. And we ended up, you know, shopping, going inside of shops and stuff. You're right. It wasn't really on the plan, but, you know, but we could do it because we had our ionizers on and we had skin guard on, so we're good. You know. Um, so, Dr. Blessman, I want to ask your opinion about something. I belong to, I think I told y'all the National Coalition of 100 Black Women here in Prince William County. Uh -huh. And my sisters all want to have galas. Well, my sisters are older than you. A lot of them are in their 70s and some of them are in their 80s. We have all age groups. And we normally have over pretty close to 2,000 people there. So they've limited the wow. tickets to 600 people. <laughs> but my concern is, I asked them, I said, what safety, biosafety protocols have y'all put into play or does the, hot, the hotel have in play? And mm -hmm. I don't think they know any because I think they're just willing to take a risk of coming. And I'm like, what are you going to do when you're a community service organization and then everybody learns that you got, you're spreading COVID because that's what would happen. And right. we're in the DMV area and I'm like, that's going to be your name. So I'm wondering if some of the things that you and Miss Shirley shared that y'all did, would that help them as far as like trying to keep COVID down? But I'm gonna have to tell them they're either gonna have to buy the ionizers or give the people the ionizers to put on. But they tend to think, quote unquote, um, there are maybe a couple of nurses or a doctor or something, but I found that a lot of doctors don't like to speak out publicly about COVID for some reason. Um, and the nurses, when I've interacted with them and which I always have my um, ionizer and I have my air cave wherever I go on my skin guard, we had one function and I still wear my mask. None of them know about the technology that I do. And so I'm like, Y'all are really not prepared by, for it to be bio, you know, take cautious or, or, or put in practice biosafety protocols. So I'm going to try to teach them some of it, but I'm like, I think that they're really, really, I think it's just denial. I think that people are so tired of being pinned up in the house and they're like, well, we used to do it this way. Well, we can't go back in the past two years prior. Wait. Right. We live in a different time. So what is your what is right. your opinion about that? Some of the stuff that you and Miss Shirley share with us, like them doing some of that stuff, seeing if they'll implement some of it, because otherwise in a room with a thousand people, which I told them, I'm like, if they don't, I'm not going in there. Absolutely. So the problem is that a lot of people don't want to do something they have to feel like other people are doing the same thing. So I know the, um, the, um, the Urban League here in Chicago, they do a, um, what's called the Golden Fellowship Gala. Mm -hmm. It is like the gala for the black community mm -hmm. in the city of Chicago. It is the thing. And they had COVID precautions. Unfortunately, some of the things that I recommended a lot of it that I recommended, they did. And some mm -hmm. of the people that I knew who, you know, that I knew personally who was going, one of the per persons that I know was actually being honored there. She did, uh, she did, they did the general ones, but she also did the, what I call, what I call the personal recommendations for herself. Right. Because she has a husband that's immunocompromised. Right. She don't want to bring anything back to him. And she was one of the people that, she was one of the honorees. Okay. Year. So all I can tell you is, I can share with you what I know, that there are people who, so the, the venue, they did ask the venue, what were the COVID precautions in terms of like air purification? How are they handling that? Um, they, you know, and that's a big one. That is really the, the biggest issue. Right. Uh, in terms of giving an event is what is the air purification setup for the hotel? How, you know, how are they refreshing the air? How are they, um, 
purifying the air. And a number of places are doing it. I mean, not only, I think we were at the Hyatt Regency in Chicago on Wacker, which is a huge and popular venue. Mm -hmm. um, the Urban League, not the Urban League, the Union League Club in Chicago has, uh, in their main ballrooms, they have air purifiers into you know, to cover that space to purify the air. So mm -hmm. that's a big one. Um, some hotels are now beginning to think about the use of skin guard as because they give events that last four hours or so. And so they're right. beginning to think about, I mean, because all of them will have hand sanitizers, but may not necessarily have the four to six hour one. And right. so some of, I think we've been talking to some about doing that, particularly for, for the event space, even if you don't want to do it for just the regular traffic, but for places, you know, for your event and just upcharge it. I mean, you just, you include it as part of the package, the COVID, you know, the premium COVID package, mm -hmm. where you, you know, an upcharge. We will make X, you know, available to you know, everybody that comes in. Um, I think it's a it's, it's a good teaching moment for a social service agency to be able to say, you know, what the requirements are. You need to be vaccinated, boosted, you know, tested, testing if you're not going to be uh, if you're not vaccinated, like the day of or within 24 hours before the event. And uh, and you know, wearing you know, have, you know, supplying skin guard. And having people to wear ionizers, you know, and not necessarily to give them because I don't think even the cheapest one is like ten bucks. Right, right. Uh, ten or eleven bucks, but you certainly letting folks know where you can get them, and they can get their own, and where the least, you know, and just sending them the link. Um, and that's going to be particularly important for somebody that's for people who are. Uh, in the age range that you're talking about, which is the same for Shirley's party. I think Shirley is willing to um, share. Is she on the line tonight? I don't think she's on the, I don't think she's on participating tonight. I'm on. Oh, yes, she is. Mm -hmm. um, so Shirley, if you could, it would be nice if you could share your invitation with Christy. Oh, okay. Like this here. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Ms. We, we would appreciate it. Okay. So, and maybe a couple of pictures too. Okay. See how people that would be that would be that would be awesome, Ms. Shirley. I'm gonna put my email in the um the chat to you. And if you can send me that um information, maybe it'll convince them. But I'm gonna do what you said, Dr. Blessman. I'm just gonna try to teach them, but you know how it is when you get a bunch of us black people in a room that are educated and sometimes we think we know more than everybody when we really don't. So well, so the, the one thing that that I would say that if if you still want to attend, you can still attend because you can just do the precautions that you do in your immediate area. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, don't be up moving around too much. Um, at, at least that's what I would do. I mean, when I go to, when I go to physical therapy and I go to acupuncture, even though I see them wipe down and I see them spray, I still spray. Right. And I still I wipe do down. That. I do that too. And, and even though I see some people wearing masks and some people not wearing masks, I still wear my mask. I still wear my tamer. Right. And I'm just over um, trying to please other people. Uh, I have to do what's right for me. The yes, funny thing is when, when people see you do that, when they get in trouble, you're the first one they're going to call. Yep. Yes, ma'am. And I, I do yep. believe y'all. I do believe you. But I'm like, I have tried to talk to them on numerous times. I've invited them to this meeting uh, several times. And yeah. I think like they only came like once or twice 
when Dr. Rowland was here, they might have came like two or three of them, and that was it. But it's like, you know, all that they think about the glitz and glam. And I'm like, what you gonna do when you take COVID home? Glitz and glam. If you're nice. gonna pick is if you're gonna let let's say if the table codes eight and four people are your friend, then you need you need to almost insist that they go and get them an ionizer. They can get one of those cheap ones. I and know that's what I did. Because the tables normally seat 10 people and um, five other people normally are five tickets that I have sold. And then okay. it's like, see, so you can control your table. Right. Yep. You're right. Uh -huh. and, and and that's a parameter. Uh, uh, that you control. I, I met some ladies out to a uh, jazz, um, a jazz thing uh, last week, and I know that uh, out of the five of us, two of my friends have tamers and they okay. have arcades, okay. but they always show up without them. Hmm. So this time, what I did, I wore my tamer, I wore my mask. And I had my air K and I did not split it up. Okay. To take care of anybody but me. Okay. <laughs> Basically, they were saying, oh, she's being selfish tonight. And I said, I'm thinking no. about myself because that's all y'all guys, y'all show up like I'm supposed to take care of everybody. Yes, ma'am. Like, the same stuff that I have. So once people understand where you're coming from, I mean, you don't have to explain yourself. You don't have to keep going on and beating people up with a stick. Just do your thing. You're right, Miss Shirley. Absolutely. And if they want to take the chance, then, you know, it'll catch them. <laughs> it's an invisible man. It's probably sitting there kissing them on the forehead and they don't even know it. So it's going to catch them eventually. You're absolutely right. <laughs> but I stopped trying to take care of everybody who they just don't want to do it. I don't know why. I can't explain it. So, now if I had been a family member, it would have been a lot more dialogue, a little bit of tone raising, you know, because the love, you know, you want to try to save your family. <laughs> right. right. But these, these ladies know better. They just figure Shirley's going to show up with everything. Don't worry about it. You don't have to bring yours. I've stopped doing that. I just bring what what I need for me. And I did not split my air cave up. Um, I sat right there <laughs> selfishly with it right in front of me. And, there you go. Uh, and just know, just enjoy the show. Right. Because if they had, if they each had brought their own air cave, there would have been enough for the entire table. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. But Miss Shirley, you're exactly right. Because I have a group of friends, they depend on me to bring my air cage and another air purifier yeah. to go out to eat. And I, t I told them about it before air cave was, uh, was uh, left our country and we couldn't get it anymore, but nobody tried to get it. Right. And I'm, I don't understand. I'm like, I'm not going to go eat with y'all all the time. And I kind of do that now. I just try to take care of myself. So yeah. I I'm gonna take your lead on that. You and Dr. Blessings lead on that because I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know about, about these people. I think that they are living in denial. Well, and I, I, I still will go sometimes, you know, but when I show up and you don't have a mask on, or if you don't have a tamer on, I don't reach to hug you. I just do the fist thing. Fist bump. And right. Sat down. right. And and if you have one on, then I may I may embrace you, or I may not. But the point of the matter is, we just have to think about the consequences. I have not gotten COVID yet, and and I'm just praying that I can keep it out my system because I do have uh, autoimmune disease. Right. And. Um, and even though I've been vaccinated and I've taken one of the boosts, I'm just wanting to keep it out of my system. So I got to stay, I got to stay present 
and intentional. And th- and I'm there. I'm there with you because I don't have asthma now, but I had childhood asthma, so I don't want it in my lungs. I have mm. the scar tissue in my lungs from being a child uh, asthmatic, and I just do not want it. And that's why I just try to protect myself. When I go to the office, I take my air cave, I take my ionizer, I wear my mask the entire time. If I take my air, uh, mask down to drink water, my air cave is definitely plugged in and it's, it's going strong. So right. I just try to protect myself and I use my skin guard. I've gone to a doctor. I never go to a doctor's appointment without my uh, my pill. My uh, I don't take the air cave. I take the um, the pour mini purifier. Right. And I set it on their desk. And some of the doctors will say, "Here she comes." <laughs> They've asked me about it, mm-hmm. but they have not tried to. Purchase one. No, or, or ask me a lot of questions or, or you know, and I've tried to get, get you know, get vocal with it. And they're like, oh, we got patients to see. I'll be right back. So, you know, hey, I, I go there to protect me. Exactly. I can't, for, I can't force them to drink the Kool-Aid if they don't want to drink it. But what they don't understand, we don't know the side effects of these new variants coming out. And it's, getting it's a bigger, it's a monster that just keeps getting bigger. He keeps increasing. And they just don't get that. Well, I said to a doctor uh, yesterday, okay, doc, don't let me outlive you because you're being arrogant. <laughs> 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 So there you have it. It is what it is. It is. Um, you're, telling, you're, you're telling the truth, Miss Shirley. Everything you're saying is, is the truth. And I think the challenge should be that we not keep isolating ourselves, but we keep challenging ourselves on how to navigate so that we can right. have a life. Right. Right. Because if someone was in the house with you, you would figure out what to do. Oh, absolutely. I don't think it's any different if you're in a restaurant or um, any place else. You, you're you going to still need to think about the virus is around. It's in here somewhere. <laughs> exactly. So. So, so I, would, I would go to the I, event. I would go to the event. I'm, I'm a, please send me your email. I'll send you the invitation. I did. At I, least try. If you get your whole table, that would be an influence on some other people around you. And it will influence. It will influence other people. You know, they're watching. They just want to be arrogant. Right. You're right. Because that's what I had thought of. And then I'll get the hydro, um, what is it, that that stuff that clean smart and I will spray fog that area down because I can go in there before it starts or I can fog a bigger area. Right. Uh, spray everything down and then, oh yeah, I would make, I would be a big public spectacle. I get there early and spray everything down and wipe everything down and somebody's going to be watching. They may not say anything. Okay. Uh, or you wait till everybody come and then you start, can everybody please get up? I'd like to spray the area, make their asses stand up while you spray. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea, Mr. Early. And they will get up too. They will That's get you. up. Because they'll be too afraid not to. Right. They will. Because you're protecting them. The- They'll see that there's 600 people in there and now, you know, it'll start to make them think. And also, you know, if you have some skin guard, make sure everybody's at the table, have an application of skin guard because if you're passing something around, whether it's the yeah. bread basket. They never yeah. turn it around. Yeah. 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 Um, what I did learn is people really appreciated the fact that they came to the party and then I was very um, nice, forceful, 
about the way things were going to go down. And then there were no incidents. Now, there's been a couple of people months later who, who have gotten something this week and last week. Why? Because they, if they probably could have come with their guards down here, they would have. Right. So they went back to doing exactly what they were doing before they got here. Right. Acting nonchalant. And then they went and then they, they got it. So <laughs> but while they were here at the party, they didn't get it and they didn't bring it in here to us. There you go. Right. right. And that's a win. Like you said, Dr. Blessman, that's a win. That's, that's a big a win. win. That is. That's a big one. So, Miss no. Charlie, I'm going to do what you said. And I'm glad that I talked to y'all. I am going to go. Yeah, but I would go. Definitely <laughs> take care of my own area, like you said, yeah. and without, um, you know, moving around. But I will spray a good section of it, and I, 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 I can handle that. I definitely yeah, can. As do long it. as you've been with this group, you know how to navigate, girl. Go have you some fun. <laughs> go have you some fun. Yes, yeah, cause, ma'am. You know, because because part of it is we don't have to be around people who aren't taking it as seriously who aren't exactly. doing the same stuff that we're doing. And it's so, going to be here for a minute. It is. It's, it's yeah. going to be here for a while. It is. You know, so, you know, so, you know, I, I'm thinking about, you know, even for like, you know, we all have to make adjustments. I'm, my son is going to be coming home. And at some point he'll get, he'll get tested when he gets home. You know, I'm already thinking about what biosafety protocols I'm going to have to have in place for my husband and I, so he don't bring anything, so we don't catch anything until right. we know that he's until we know that he's COVID negative. I can't assume that he was doing everything that I would have asked him to do while he was away from my from from my supervision, right? Because you know, um, you know. So I had company this week. I had my brother from Houston. I haven't seen him in six months. And I was really stressed out. Mm. And he went to Wisconsin. He's a musician, plays saxophone. I know he didn't have a mask on the whole time. And so I had a talk with him. And I told him, when you walk in the door, the first thing you're going to do is take your shoes off and go to the shower. And so he tried to wait until six to get here. It didn't matter where he came at two. That's what he was going to have to do. And so he did that. You know, he pouted a little bit and went sat on the patio. But I had four purifiers going the whole time. And I had sanitized the room before he got here. And then the minute he left, I sprayed down everything, washed everything, wiped everything, because I had two more people that were coming the next day. They had to do the same thing. Uh, they had to wash their clothes every day. Whatever they had on, it had to be washed. And they kept saying, no, no, we don't have to do that. No, I wash every day. Just put it in there, let's wash it now. So, you know, you want things to be in order, which makes it work for you. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they're talking about me now, but I know they went home without anything at my house and they didn't bring anything here. Mm -hmm. that, that was really smart, Miss uh, Miss Shirley. And that makes a lot of sense because that's the first thing I do when I come home. I actually take my clothes off in the garage in a bag and go straight to the laundry room when I come home from work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have and to do it. I, I didn't want them to, to be out getting out, uh, you know, a little funky and then bringing that come sitting on my chairs and then they gone. And then I got to be wiping everything down, you know, all paranoid. No. <laughs> <laughs> so they had to shower the minute they walked in, but I did the same thing. And then I kept the purifiers going the whole time they, they were here. So we all are okay. I'm okay. They're okay. 
my brother's okay. I gave him a ionizer and a little mini purifier to take back to Wisconsin with him. He said he used it. So. Especially if he's in a club. Yeah, he's playing, you know, so he mm -hmm. got the mask off a lot. So. You know, he's, you said he's got the mask off a lot? Yeah, because he plays a saxophone. All right. So he came Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, so he definitely should have an ionizer. Absolutely. He, he left here with one, uh, the mm -hmm. cheaper one. But then mm -hmm. uh, he left me some money to, to buy him one and send it home. So, so he was convinced. Good. Because mm -hmm. you know he's he's a musician. He's playing in clubs. It's an indoors. It's an indoor space. Mm -hmm. Um. And yeah, I mean, he take that's a risk he takes every night for his livelihood. Because I mean, I don't know how many people are in the club every night, but fifty to one hundred. That's still you know the probability is that at least five to ten people in that club got caught. You know, breathing it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's a win, Shirley. He went home with the ionizer and said he used it. <laughs> yep, he called Has, me. Mm -hmm. Told me to get he wanted one, one, one like the one I had. <laughs> oh, okay. Because he read all the information. Good. Yeah. The test data from Airtamer is pretty pretty significant. It is. It does. You know. You know, and I realized that, you know, some of the um, equipment is not, you know, you're talking $140, $189 for the air tamer, depending on which model you get. You know, it is a significant investment, but this thing is going to be around here for a while. And now on top of that, we're talking about monkeypox too, which I want to point out. Everything that you're doing for COVID is the same thing you need to do for monkeypox. <laughs> Nothing's changed. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, take care of surfaces, you know, block the pathogen from your airways, put on your skin guard, protect your hands and, your, you know, parts of your body that touch surfaces like your forearm, your elbow stuff, that kind of thing. Um, uh, Dr. Besson, the air chamber, is that something you can carry with you? Because that's the only thing that I'm just kind of not knowing what to do with the air tamer. What do you, you carry that with you? What do you do? Yeah, you wear it around your neck. This is a, I don't know if I can. You wear it around your neck. It releases negative ions and the negative ions attach to viral particles and makes them fall. It doesn't feel COVID, but it does attach to negative ions. It keeps it out of your face. And, so and it makes them fall. So the, 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 and they stick to, they'll stick to surfaces around you. So that's the reason why you need to wear this. You need to have it. Oh, okay. Do you have it? What about you? Can't you wear both of them, the air tamer and the. Because we had all kinds of like bubble bands. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Okay. I need to tell the people next in this next to me that they need to quiet down a little. We got to feed it, right? We got to feed it, right? Sorry. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, I was saying you wear the air tamer and the ionizer at the same time, or the air tamer is an ionizer. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yep. I, I've been here two different. Okay. So yep, they're the same. They do the same thing. Okay. And this is just that this is sort of like the Cadillac of ionizers. I see. Okay. Okay. So, they get it on Amazon. So they are they other, on Amazon. Huh? Mm -hmm. Airtamer.com. Okay. okay. It's going to last you? longer, too. It's going to last longer. It, it's not a single charge. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you. Mm. Oh, crap. Right next to the track. We are, we're trying to make um, arrangements to bring the air tamer, one of the okay. uh, companies. To our form. I'm just waiting for the gentleman, um, Mr. Tony Anderson, to get back from um, being out of town and set a date. And so, um, hopefully, within the next couple of weeks, I said that last week, but I haven't heard from him yet. But he was out of town all week last week, so I'm waiting for him to kind of catch up and get go through his emails. Um, but they're going to show on the show and talk about the technology with the air tamer. So look, look for that in the near, near future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So on a single charge, it lasts for 150 hours. So that's almost, they're 186 hours in a week. So you end up charging this once a week, maybe twice a week, if you were, if you were using it 24 um, seven. But again, you know, it's, you know, right now, this is what's accessible and it's effective and it keeps the pathogen out of your, you know, out of your airways. And that's, you know, that's the, 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 the significant thing that we need to see happen. So, but, you know, there are, you know, other ionizers that might last like 40 hours on a single charge. And they're, they can be like, you know, 30, 40 dollars, something like that. Um, the one that looks like headphones lasts for 15 hours on a single charge. Um, and I think that's like $20. Um, Ms. Christy, I saw a uh, ionizer that I was going to a gala. And I saw an ionizer that was shaped, a silver one that was shaped like a teardrop. So I bought it and I attached it to my gown like it was a piece of jewelry. Well, I'm going to look for that one. That's, that's a good idea. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You know, you know, there's, there's things you can do, you know, make it, you know, make it look nice. And um, I think the one that, uh, I think the one, I think what I think I got one for, Michelle, you have one that looks fine, that's white, and it has an interesting shape. So it's, you know, I mean, so you don't have to get something that's like, you, I mean, it can look like a piece of jewelry. You know, it doesn't have to. You know, you just figure out how you, you know, how you want to, how you want to sport it, and um, go there and be safe. Um, you know, for a gala or something like that, I would take my air tamer and put it on the table. But I would definitely also have an ionizer on in case you're walking around. You know. You go to the bathroom, you know, you may not take your entertainment with you to the bathroom, but you got something still to protect your face. Or you can put your mask back on, whatever. But I, don't, I, have, I see no problem with having, being multiple, having multiple layers of protection and having everything, having more than one option, um, depending on your situation. Um, or, or, you know, I mean, I don't know, you know, what you may be doing at this particular gala. I know for the one that I went to, you know, I had my air cave sitting on the table. I had, you know, because I know I knew a lot of people that were there, I knew that at some point I'd be walking around, taking pictures, talking to people that were in the room. You know, so I wanted to make sure that I had some kind of protection and coverage while I was doing that. But, uh, you know, but, you know, we have technology that allows us to be able to do pretty much what we want to do if we want to make that investment. I don't know, 30, 40 bucks to be able to, you know, uh, go to a restaurant and, and, and be social is, you know, not a small price to pay, you know. 
Oh, well, he is a small price. Right? Um, and you'd be surprised if, like the other day, we were at, my husband and I were at a restaurant here in Martha's Vineyard. We had the air cave on the table. And the waitress came over and she asked me, what was that? And I explained to her what it was. And she thought it was just so neat. And I, that's, then I mentioned to her, I said, well, you know, you can't get it in the United States anymore. But I did give her the website. But it also led to a conversation about using the ionizer and the skin guard. So I gave her a score of the skin guard. She tried it. She loved it. I talked about how that was important for her because as a waitress, she just touches stuff that everybody else touches all day long for her entire shift. So you can put this on at the beginning of your shift. You can still wash your hands. You can still put other things on top of it. But you're pretty much covered for your entire shift. And then we got into a conversation about, and then, you know, I told her about the air table because I had that on too. My husband had his on. He had a different kind. He had the, the one that looks like headphones. He had that on. And she was just so glad to have the information because she said she has grandparents who are afraid to go out of their house and do anything with them. And so she was she took down all she wrote notes, took down all the took down all of the, you know, the, the websites. And she said, I'm gonna read up about this and research this. And I gave her the uh, information about our you know about our Zoom. Uh, meetings on Tuesday at seven. I gave her our website. Now, you know, she's not here this week, you know, but I'm pretty sure she, I'm pretty sure this young lady followed through. She says she's not here. She might be. No, I don't see, see a new name here. But, you know, you never know. To me, that was a win. Because she was a young woman who was a waitress at a restaurant who wants to do something so that her grandparents can go out and have a life. Those are always wins, Dr. Blessman, because I share like the um, the um, skin guard with people. I've shared that with friends that are nurses. And so supposedly they're going to the website to order it. And they're always touching people. And I told them that they're the gloves that they can get this by skin guard too. So mm -hmm. I give them the information. It's, you know, like you and Ms. Shirley said, and it's up to them whether or not they use it. Right. Because a lot of them are not looking for the information. They just use whatever and they're like, whatever. We're all, and, and some people have the, ad, ad, adopted the idea that everybody's eventually going to get COVID. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to get COVID. I'm like, Miss Cheryl, I'm not going to get COVID. I'm going to do whatever I can to avoid getting COVID. I still I'm trying my best not to get COVID. And, 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 you know, at least not until I'm trying my best not to get COVID. Even if they had medication for it, a cure for it, I still would try not to get it. But we don't have a cure for it right now. So I don't, definitely don't want it. You know, because they're now they're talking about a third of the people, anywhere from 25% to a third of the people who get COVID will have long COVID. You know, um, and so the more times you get COVID, the more you increase the probability that you might also get long COVID. And they're talking about some, you know, some 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 symptoms and long COVID that are particularly problematic for me. You know, and I, well, if for, I would think for anybody, you know, um, brain fog, you know, you know, problems with concentration. They're talking about sleeping problems, um, uh, the fatigue, depression, depression. You know, I don't need any of that. <laughs> you know, I don't want or need any of that. I don't think anybody wants any of that, but I think they are just, like I said, I think that they have COVID fatigue and they're just tired of us being living in a pandemic because they're we're not used to living like this. But like you tell us in this group, we have to adapt and we have to thrive. And, and, that, and 
And I'm said I said had to say that to my husband. It's like I, I'm asthmatic, and not as bad as I was when I was uh, younger. But I also had walking pneumonia, so I can't can't have any breathing issues. So I told him I said if you don't want to follow the rules and protect yourself, then I guess I must live upstairs, and you're gonna live downstairs because this ain't. I, I just can't afford to do that. I just can't afford to go out there and just. Well, you know, I'm tired of COVID, but I think he, he let his guard down and, uh, and I think that's how I had gotten it. We're still fighting. Mm. We're still trying to make all of those things people that work. So. I bet she won't let his guard down no more, Miss McNair. <laughs> no, and you gotta be strict with you know, sure. your family members, even with my, my girls. I mean, they grown, but you know, when we, we go out to lunch and, and uh, dinner like we did this last weekend, I spray them all down. We have the hands in, uh, the skin guard. I spray the table and I wear my mask because I told them, I don't know where y'all been. Okay. <laughs> and my hand paper. And I gave them all the same tools like Miss Shirley said, but you, you know, you could bring the horse to the water, but you can't make them drink. But you can't, so, you know, so you just gotta do the best you can do. I Carol, she posted in the chat saying that, you know, we don't even think about the strain that this is really having in our healthcare system um, and the shortage of nurses. Um, you know, they left, they left the profession. Good nurses, right? right. Now, we got some good nurses coming up coming up the back, but we've lost seasoned um, nurses to this pandemic and they left, they left because it's, it's too much. So well, if, you, if people would think about themselves, that would be that would be a step in the right direction. Everybody would just take ownership of themselves. I think we could all just get on one page. I mean, maybe they won't think about the hospital, they don't care, you know, the nurses, the doctors, until they need them. But if we just think about ourselves, governing ourselves to do the right thing, loving ourselves enough to want to fight for ourselves. So, air team at $149 seems like a drip in the bucket <laughs> to me, because I really would like to live a quality life. Right. I don't want to be stuck, it's stuck in the house being afraid anymore. Right. And I don't know if mine is just not being afraid. It's just that I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it's just a sea change or just being content with being an introvert, knowing that my personality is an extrovert, but just this COVID has helped me to just go within and I don't need a lot of hoopla um, to be happy. I, I go outside, you know, going to the grocery store, to the drugstore is enough for me. I do have a trip though um, to Los Angeles for a week in September. We're doing a church family reunion and um, our church is, is uh, we're still relatively young. We're about four, 54 years old, but we started out together. So there's some 40 year relationships, um, people that I've known for the last 40 years in my life. And so, you know, COVID, right? And um, so I had to interject about the biosafety protocols that needed to be followed at the banquet. Um, and just the sheer pushback um, that I received was, just, I, I was amazed. Um, well, see, that's why I want you to get better with having expectations yeah. of people. You have to have expectations of yourself first. Yes. Well, I mean, and, I, I'm going to yeah. have my stuff, but. Yeah. I mean, yeah. listen, my, I, people I'm have to choice. Me, Shirley. <laughs> and that's the funny part, like. I don't know if it's just relationship pushback or people are not really understanding that 
they have to take this serious. Um, How can they when you have, uh, when you had leadership who wasn't taking it serious? I mean, they set the tone. Yes. From the very beginning. We, we can't un unring that bell. No. Uh, so the bell is, is wrong, you know, so look at all the lives who've been lost. That's not enough to make people say, I'm going to be better. I don't know what else to do, so. But to take care of, definitely take care of self. Miss Dr. Arby, your hand. I have this story that I should tell. Yes, I put my hand up. Thank you so much, uh, Michelle, because I finally found where my hand was. Um, but I, I, I love the sharing. I love the venting. Um, I love the, yeah, one garage. of the things I wanted to ask Dr. Blessman, uh, since they have approved the Novavax and CDC is on that, can we perhaps at our next meeting or one of them do a pro and con of the Novavax and that second booster? Uh, uh, vaccine because you know now we're at a crossroads and uh, once again it's making decisions in our best interest based on the science so we did it with the pack um, and um, I'd like to do it with those and they were aware that these people the pros and cons of Novavax versus the second Booster or uh, the fourth booster? Fourth, uh huh. Yeah, we're yes. on that fourth. Okay. The fourth. Thank you. Okay, you got it. I'm writing it down. Okay. Is there any now? Novavax. Okay, we'll do a, a, another information series on Novavax because there are people that are not vaccinated at all who are waiting for a safer vaccine. Right, exactly. So, is that being available pretty soon? Uh, Dr. Blessman? We have, I have not heard any information yet about the availability of Novavax. Okay. You know, um, just to our community, I just find it astounding that something that has no eyes, no ears, no mouth, no, no limbs, can, uh, no brain can actually um, try to outthink science and literally hide from our immune system uh, to still um, mutate different variants to, to do anything to survive. More than some of us will do to survive. It's just astounding. My last comment, I'm about to mute. And I knew guys from my hometown, Little Mayberry, right now, who I posted a link um, I to medicine be frank with uh, about the novel. And then when that whole thing came out on the table, it's a two dose series, um, like the Pfizer and the Another um, other countries have approved Novavax for for use and even for use with twelve to um, seventeen year olds. Um, the stocks are going up, that's for sure. Here's here's my I just don't know when it's um, when it's going to be ready. Yeah. So how do we do that? Okay. 
So we are now at 916. What should we cover in the next 15 minutes? No, we've had wins. Well, they had the, you know. I was looking at the um, variants. Yeah, BA5 mm -hmm. is now about, well, between. And then, and then um, and it started to mount up a little. So here's the yeah BA five is like eighty two percent of the of the variants of the you know current variant uh, infection rate with BA four pretty tiny BA two is almost gone. Oh. Um, we know that BA two point BA two point seven five is out there has not has not spread has not shown up at least on our genomic surveillance records in any you know strong measurable way, but it is of concern. Um, uh, and one thing that I'm concerned about in terms of BA two point seven five is that it's uh, the mono, you know, the mono, no, monoclonal antibodies no longer work with, with it. Um, so we're losing our, you know, in this will have, of course, that also speaks to the fact that you can have had previous uh, uh, COVID infections. Okay, this is my, my housemates again. Little out of here. Um, uh, can, can everybody hear me pretty good or no? Hello? Hello? We can hear you, doctor. Okay, okay, good. So we know that it, it's, at some point, they, um, you know, the antibodies are not going to work. And we know the vaccines are also not going to work at some point. So the real thing to watch for those of us who have vaccines is BA 2.75 and whether that starts to take take off. Yes. Because if that takes off, then clearly our vaccines will be obsolete. No one's guaranteed that. Um, the other thing that people need to be aware of is that if you travel overseas, I have a friend that's in Mexico. They caught COVID while they were in Mexico and they cannot get Paxlovid over there because they don't have it there. So if you're planning to travel overseas, either don't get COVID or see if you can get an emergency supply of Paxlovid to take with you. That other countries may not have it. Just letting you know. Well, that wraps up kind of for me the things that I felt I needed to to say tonight. Is that this is a group that's done? Yeah. Let me recap. I say this is a group that's done remarkably well. You are part of an exclusive club. Many of you, because you've never gotten COVID or not gotten COVID since you started with this group. Or even if you just got it once, you know, you will be still be part of an exclusive club because there are many, many, many more people who are getting it two and three times. Um, the only, you know, so this is, this is a win that we have figured out what to do to stay safe. Um, you've done better than your teacher, our original teacher, uh, Dr. Lane Roland. That means that you are living the word, not just learning it, learning the science. You're also living the science and living, putting it into application and what it is that you learn and being very rigorous about it. That's got to be daunting. So, um, 
you know, and when you think about all the people that have, even President Biden got COVID, Obama, you know, Nancy Pelosi, a whole bunch of folks. So if you've made it this far and not gotten it, you've done, it's quite a feat and it's a win. And just continue to, to, you know, I know that it may seem frustrating, not seeing, it is frustrating to talk to people and then they'll seem to take it seriously or whatever, but, you know, um, you're part of a very exclusive club, the COVID Dodgers or another, the other, uh, um, uh, the other term that I've heard was uh, COVID virgins, you know. So I told somebody, I said, this is a virginity that I don't want to lose, okay? <laughs> so let me stay a COVID virgin forever if I can. So, you know, so you've done, you know, give yourself a pat on the back. You've done a great job, you know, and you've lived your life. I mean, you know, we get the survey earlier uh, in this, uh, you know, in this meeting, and we talked about all the, you know, some of you have done, you know, gone on concerts, have traveled, given parties, went to parties. You know, you didn't stop living your life. Move, Michelle, you moved cross country. Uh, Justin moved from Chicago to LA, you know, and then traveled overseas. I mean, you know, the people, you know, one of our members has been cruise, has been on, has been on several cruises. Um, you know, we've done this, been a COVID dodger and had done it while still living our lives. Um, uh, we, you know, we will, help as much as we can to make sure that you have what you need to live robust, healthy, joyful lives, but do it safely. And so I applaud you for that. So those of you who have, you know, have also shared information with people, that's a win. Everybody's not going to listen. and Everybody's not going to you know, and, you know um, take it in and actually use the information. So said, but you know what? At the end of the day, uh, I have an a, a Ethiopian proverb that I, that I rely on, and that is you can give people the best information that you have. And if they don't listen, then let adversity be their teacher. And it's hard, you know, and that may sound harsh, but it's a, a reality. And it is a, you know, it is a practice that I have to even practice with my son. You know, I don't want him to get COVID, but I gave him the best information that I could. He went out there and did what he did. Okay. You know, he's, you know, the best I can do is on my end is to figure out what I want to do to protect myself, given that he may or may not follow all the COVID protocols. And I love my son dearly, dearly. You know, but, you know, on the other hand, I think that, that when he went out there and did what he did, there was a big learning lesson for him. So hopefully he's doing better now, you know. So as Ms. Shirley has said, say what you need to say. And move on. And as soon as something happens, you'll be the first one that they call. And she's right about that. I've had people call after the fact. And, you know, and the conversation is not about shame and guilt. It's about let's try to do better so that you don't catch this again. Because I don't want you to have to go through any negative ill effects or having multiple cases of COVID. Let's do what we can. I know everybody's on their own learning journey, and so and, and you just got to respect that to some extent. That some people do have to have that adversity be their teacher, and you got to be okay with that. Um, but in the meantime, you stay strong, you know, and you do what you need to do to protect yourself. And, I, and what I heard tonight was a lot of discussion about doing what what you need to do to protect yourself and being okay with that, even while you are traveling in the midst of other people who are not necessarily, you know, doing what's the most protective thing that they can do. And so having the, being able to resist the peer pressure to not do anything, because that's really what it comes down to people, you're being pressured 
on some level to not wear a mask, to don't give a crap, to not do anything, just live, you know, just live as if COVID didn't exist. You know, so you, you're resisting that that peer pressure to not adopt that attitude. And I applaud you for that. Um, what can I say? I try to protect myself. What more because, can I say? You don't want to stay. So on that note, I, you know, that then I'm on vacation. You for your, your child. Uh, you. I know Dr. Cato uh, also mentioned that she'd like for us to do uh, something about the height of this is the height of travel season. And so we need to do something to talk about uh, how to travel. And I will include that. And we've got a couple of suggestions for next week. So. We'll see what, what we can get on tap for in the next two, three weeks, okay? Any other comments, questions before we close out? Enjoy your vacation, Doc. Oh, I am. Yes, I, I, I know. I can tell. You're in a zone, uh, but you're functioning quite well. You know, I'm doing good. You look good, girl. Well, trust me, the building has poor reception. Probably from oh, a lot no. of uses, not much internet or anything. So, oh but wow, you wouldn't want you wouldn't even want to be here. <laughs> oh okay, well you be careful because if you if there's if Lollapalooza is happening right outside your door, I'm gonna be on the patio. Okay, they, well I know you got air filters everywhere. Yeah, and in my house watching watching TV. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, no. Because when you got thousands of people coming into a community, thousands, yeah. then that means everything, all the surfaces, all the stuff around there, mm -hmm. stores, everything. Exponentially. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. So I'm glad I'm not there either. Yeah. Uh, any, <laughs> anything else? Thank you, Patricia. Yeah. I will enjoy my vacation. I can't wait to come to London. That is all my travel plans. Yeah, that's right. Well, well most, most people I know, they're just living a normal life as though COVID didn't exist. So it's, um, so I have to choose where I attend to. So like we've got um, the Car Notting Hill Carnival coming up and I think that's going to be the biggest carnival for years, you know, because everybody's just heading down that way, all age groups, everyone. So I, just, I, just, I usually go, but I just said this year I won't because they haven't had it for a couple of years. But this year I, I'm not going to attend because I, I, I can tell it's going to be a big, massive, crowded place to be. Mm. So, um, so I, I just attend a few things compared to how I used to but the peer pressure is like oh you're not going to do so. so I think people look at me like why am I not attending as many things as I used to so I go to like funeral wakes and, and things like that you know just to show my respect but again I, like you said um um I look at my awareness of the crowd situation whenever I'm around it. Right. 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 But the funny well, thing is, like, most, most people don't seem to be getting it. Everybody seems to be aware. Right. Right. Most people, I say that again. Mo most people don't seem to be contracting it, it don't seem that I know anyway. Well, I don't know. It's just. Hmm. I don't know. I the infection rates are up. They're up to yeah. I, I haven't looked at. I don't know. I, I don't know the UK version of, you know, the variant trackers and the infection rates, hospitalization rates, and death rates that get posted in the United States. I'm pretty sure there's a UK version of that. I just don't know what it is. The 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 BA two point seven five is way up in India, yes. way up, yeah. and. Um, they're talking about BA5 being running rampant in, you know, in most of the major industrialized countries. So yeah. I can't imagine that it's 
no, I think no. it is here. It is here, but it's as though in my community, I don't seem to know a lot of people that are sick with it. Mm. Well, mm. this is Marguerite. Oh. I know that there are a lot of people who don't tell people that they have it. I well. watched the one that I knew had it, and they were at Disney World in five days of uh, being diagnosed. So there are people who have it, and they just don't they say don't anything. Say nothing. Yeah, I think that's what's happening. Michelle, Michelle this is Dr. K. Um, tell Dr. Blessman good night yeah. and thank yeah. you for <laughs> while she is on vacation in, in this wonderful form. Give us some music or something, Michelle, because you know we'll be here until 10 o'clock. <laughs> All right. Over. Good night, everybody. Give I'm us out. Some music, Michelle. Give us some of your music. Love you, Doc. <laughs> Love you all. Stay safe. Live robust, joyful lives. Absolutely. Thrive, not just survive during this pandemic. <laughs> Good night, Dr. Kato. I'm not doing music tonight. <laughs> That's right, Michelle. That's okay. That's okay. We still love you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Good night, everyone. Take, take care. Yes, Good night, everyone. Thank you, ladies night. and gentlemen. Good yep. night. Good night. Absolutely. Good night. Thank you. Be well. Good night.